joining me now is Dr. Alan Mendoza, who's the executive director of the think tank, the Henry Jackson Society. And very good to talk to you today. Um, so far, the Prime Minister, and we think possibly Grand Chap's also unlikely to say directly pointing the finger at China, but how likely do you think it is that China's behind this? Well, I'd share uh, your view or Sky's view that uh, it is indeed China behind this. Uh, we've seen examples of China trying to hack the Electoral Commission and individual MPs accounts have been critical of China. And this would seem to be in very much in the modus operandi of what the uh, Chinese Communist Party has gotten up to, not just here, but in other countries as well. And clearly the government have reasons for why they don't yet want to reveal who is behind it. But I would expect them to get onto that pretty quickly because there's no point saying there's been a hack without uh, then identifying the perpetrator. How embarrassing is it for the government? Well, hugely. Firstly, the details here are uh, home address details of, you know, serving members of the armed forces. Uh, you know, there they, they was payrolls that were hacked here as well. In theory, at least, this could enable the Chinese to try and work out who might be financially compromised or who might be open to an advance for espionage or something along these lines. It's a terribly serious breach, of course, of national security to have your serving uh, armed forces personnel's details leaked in this way. The fact that it is a contractor and not the actual Ministry of Defence itself proper, I suppose, does that change things? Well, it, it doesn't change things in the sense that the end result is the same, unfortunately, but I think it will obviously lead to questions about the, the necessary security measures being put in place by contractors, by those who we're relying upon to provide services for our, you know, for government or for, for the armed forces in this regard. And I suppose also questions as to whether this contractor may also have contracts with other government departments? Well, indeed, yes. Um, uh, we only know about this particular aspect. It may well, of course, have been this was a very surgical hack. Uh, the target was carefully chosen. The data was carefully chosen. If so, then the attacker, and again, we're presuming it was China, would have had a purpose in mind for what it wants to do with that data. So the key to this is to understand that, whether it was more widespread, whether it was a, a targeted attack or not, and then what might be the application of that data for a nefarious purposes. How do you think the UK should respond here? Well, I think we really passed the time of declaring China a threat. Again, we're going to wait for official confirmation here, but it's quite clearly within China's MO. We've seen the previous examples when sanctions were put on uh, state, you know, sort of linked companies, but not the Chinese state itself. In reality, we surely have to move now to sanctioning the Chinese state itself for its repeated attacks on our national infrastructure. There's clearly a pattern of this. There's clearly a, a policy to allow it at the very least. And even if the Chinese claim they're not actually doing this as a part of policy and you know individuals are, are somehow doing this, that's just not believable in the context of a Chinese uh, state which has control over all aspects of that country. So really, we have to go to the source and say to the Chinese government, enough is enough. You've got to clear up your act. And if you're not going to do it, we are going to apply sanctions to help you do that. And ideally, of course, those sanctions should not just be from us. They should be from all those other countries who are similarly affected. Clearly, within the government, they will be looking at this and looking at the positives that come from having a relationship with China, the economic benefits, and this will be a balancing act that they have weighed up themselves. Why do you think they have, have not come to the same conclusion you have? Well, I think there is a, obviously an understandable fear about potentially losing trade and economic uh, benefits. But the reality is that if you don't stand up for your values and your systems and your national defence, uh, then you're going to encourage attackers to keep on chipping away until they discover something they can really utilise against you. And then all the economic and trade benefits you have will be worth nothing because essentially you've given away the crown jewels of intelligence in some way, shape or form to an attacker. So the time really to stand up for things are now, particularly now when the Chinese economy is struggling and China's in no place to want to cut back trade when it itself is looking to get out of its sclerotic growth and continue its own uh, economic advances. So that it really is the perfect time now to stand up for ourselves and say, ideally, as I said, in collection with others, because that increases the power and the potential for real change on China's part and say enough is enough. I mean, fundamentally, do we just need to stop being so nice to China? Well, yes, we've got to be realistic now. China's not being nice to us. So from this perspective, for one side to pretend everything is hunky-dory and the other side to quite clearly continue to try and undermine what, we're, what we are doing as a country, that tells you that one side's acting in bad faith. And when you have a bad faith act, you've got to 
put the measures in place to encourage them to return to a more normative stance. And I think that can be done, but it will require people standing up rather than allowing this behaviour to continue. And if you, you know, behave in a supine fashion to China, all the evidence suggests China continues in what it's doing and does not change. But if you stand up to it, as we've seen in the case of the Americans in the past, there have been changes that have enabled progress to be made in the relationship.